want to say hello and I miss you guys so much. I'm so excited to be back on with y'all. And I see Jojo, you made it. Just finished supper with hubby and making dishes and uh, finishing the dishes. Oh, we had a trouble with our dishwasher. It's a long story, but the whole uh, arm fell off in the middle of a cycle or something like that. And then it landed on the heat thingy. We're lucky we didn't have a fire because my husband was smelling something and then he ended up opening it up and seeing that the thing fell over and was burning on the heater thingy. Anyway, it's very, very technical, but we're all safe and we have a new arm for the thingamabob. So dishwashing is back in business. No more mommy washing. Having said that, my hands are like crazy chapped because for the past week I have been hand washing. <laughs> I've been hand washing and I haven't been wearing gloves because I, I don't have a set and I'm, I, I've been too busy to get a pair. But let's see here. Oh my gosh, Classic Crafter, what? You've got your Addy ready. Everyone's got their Addy ready. This is so cute. I've never done an Addy log, but I'm like, just like, I'll tell you what motivated me to want to do this because I'm like, I, I'm just so excited to, to do this today. So let's see here. So basically, First of all, let's catch up. If you're if you're just logging on, let me know where you're logging in from because today we are doing a um, we're doing a live and we're going to be addying along, making stuff for Christmas. If you've got a project on the go, work on your project. If you're looking for a project to go with, to to make, follow along with my Addy project. So this is just for us to just spend some time together and make some fun Christmas or holiday stocking stuffers or things for people that we love. Just make tons and tons of stuff. So that's what we're here to do. But let's catch up where we've been because I know that it's been a while since we've just talked about what's been up. And um, I know not a lot of you might, uh, some of you have businesses, some of the, some of you are, are like makers like me, some of you love doing this as a hobby to unwind and everything like that. Um, as for me, I've been doing orders. So that's one of the reasons why I've been relying a lot on my taped content that I had pre-batched and kind of putting it out there, seeing what people are liking. It looks like you guys really love the patterns, but I think it's because everyone's making, we're making gifts. So if you're making a gift for somebody, I would love to hear what you've got in the works. Let's see what we've got going. Let's see here. Jojo says that's lucky that he noticed it. Yes, it's lucky that my husband noticed that there was the arm burning on the the heat thing element of our dishwasher and was able to stop the cycle. But it's fixed now. Thank God. Anyhow, so um, let me know what you're making right now. If it's for your, are you making something as a project for a video? Or are you making something for a gift? Um, I'd love to hear. As for me, I've been working on filling corporate orders and doing some wholesale. I didn't anticipate doing much wholesale this year, but I, I've done quite a bit this year. And then also, what have I been doing? I've been um, working on my online shop. So a lot of stuff has happened. How was your Black Friday, guys? For those of you who sell um, product sales, like, did you get a lot of sales? What kind of stuff did you sell? I really want to know how you guys are doing. I'm excited to hear. So tell me if you've made any sales and what kind of things you're selling or what kind of things you're making as gifts. And also I've been planning promos for like winter. So I have a few new things out in my line, but also I um, I have new colorways in my line that I've made making available. And as all you know, like there's a, there, there's like also a de supply demand issue worldwide. Like it's hard to ship internationally these days. So a lot of people are finding it hard to find supplies. Luckily I started the year with quite a bit of supplies. So I don't have so much um, to work on for, um, for that I don't have supplies for, but I do um, have lots of, uh, so I am able to fill a number of orders, but I'm also finding that since some people are, but finding, are placing orders, uh, they are, are like, well, luckily they're able to place orders for things that I have in stock for. Anyway, I'm out of practice with this whole live thing, but uh, stay with me guys, because we're going to enjoy this evening. So what else? Um, what else has been up? Oh yeah, and I've been coaching a lot of students who are also getting their businesses off the ground. So this is their first year in their, in their businesses, like getting started. So I'm wishing them lots and lots of uh, prosperity and they're, they're, at least I feel they have support and we're all getting going. And um, yeah, drop in the comments any kind of new ideas that you've been making. Um, a new kind of scarf for Christmas ideas and gifts. 
I actually, that's funny that you mentioned, I didn't make a, my daughter designed a scarf for her friend and I won't say who, just in case she's watching, but we made it and I didn't think it would turn out, but it was super cute. Like we ended up making this really, really long, tell me everyone, did you get any Black Friday yarn sales? Because yeah, I don't know if you, like I'm in Canada, so I know that in the States they get crazy good sales, but here the best sale I could find, you let me know, is um, the best sale I could find was the buy two, get one free at Michael's. So what I did was I stocked up on Heartland yarn and the super silky soft, I think it's loose and threads or is it impeccable? I can't remember, but it's the soft and shiny. I think it's from loops and threads. If you, if any of you know what I'm talking about, let me know. So, um, so you did no sale there, no, no problem. Let's see, you need a visa. Hmm. Okay. So <laughs> let's see here. So anyway, I got some yarn for Black Friday and that was nice, but I try not to buy too, too much yarn because I still have to use up a lot of yarn for my orders that I'm making right now. And truly one of the reasons I wanted so badly to do an Addy along was because my hands need a break. They need a break. And I know this is the time of year where I could potentially injure my hands, but I still want to make for fun because I don't know what you guys do, but this time of year can seem so incredibly busy that I've I've read a lot of people in comments have been um, like they've been losing their uh, their what's it called their crojo or their motivation for crochet, and I never really lose my motivation for crochet. It's just my body starts hurting because honestly, I could always you. The thing I love about crochet is that if I don't have something to make for others, because usually it'll be my orders that kind of make me lose motivation because I get tired. But if I have, if I'm not making for other people, I like making things like for me, which is so rare because I never make anything for myself. So when I get the opportunity to make something for me, I just, I love it when I have some spare time. So I don't think I ever lose my crojo, but what do you guys do to stay motivated when you feel like you're overworked? Let's see here, my life, let's see. My left hand is not very cooperative lately, so it's only knitting machine for me. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why I wanted to do Addy today because it's um, it doesn't hurt my hands as much and it's just so fun and fast and you get something right away. So it's almost the satisfying, like I don't do a lot of shopping right now either. Like I, I haven't literally been to a mall for Christmas shopping. So whenever, cause whenever I want to make, like have something new, I just, I'll make it or I'll order it online. So anyway, that's just how it is. So I see some new people are joining us for our, um, our Addy along. Hey, Genesis Green. I hope you have a little project to work on with us tonight. Let me know what you're working on. And um, let's see, but I love crochet and miss it a lot. It's too bad, Jojo. You should really try using the ergonomic handle when you get a chance. But I see your videos and it looks like you still manage with the crochet hook, but I guess it's one of those things where you can't really crochet with it very long or it starts to hurt your hand. I totally, totally understand that. But tell me what you do to keep yourself motivated. Hey, Mark, it's good to see you. Thanks for logging on today. So anyway, today what I thought I would do is spend some time just chit-chatting with y'all and then seeing what's up and um, making something that you can consider for as a gift or as an item to sell. Let me tell you the thing that I'm going to make today. I don't have a finished one done, but we're going to have a finished one here in a jiffy is a um, it's a little child mini toque. A toque is a beanie here in Canada. So a toque is what we call beanies in Canada. And it'll be two tone. It'll be a lot like Jojo's ornament that she made for her little the her uh santa hat so it'll have a nice white rim and it'll be red i'll have a nice poofy pom-pom with a canada bliss pom-pom at the tar at the top and then we're going to make that now just so you, so you know the measurements or the rows that i'm going to give you today are perfect for about a three to six month old okay if you decide to put anything ornamented on it just make sure that it can stand the pull and push tests to make sure that if you are going to sell it you are not liable for choking but if it's just a gift or if it's for somebody in your family then you don't really have to worry too much about that but again it's always good to make sure that whenever you make things for babies it is safe um 
the size I'm making is for three to six months old. Now, if the three to, if you want to make something bigger, like if you want to make it for like a six to nine month old, or if you want to make it for an adult, you just have to make the length of the beanie longer. So just so you know, if you want to adjust the pattern, you're welcome to adjust it. You're welcome to sell this <laughs> for like the finished product or if, or write it out and sell it on your set on your own. Oh yes. You're so good, Jojo. Thank you very much. I will be using the Addy 46, okay? But feel free to um, follow along on your Centro 48 or whatever pin you have. It works lovely on most other, um, it works lovely on all of them as well. Genesis is working on, I have a Centro, but I've been doing a decent job with hats. Awesome. I find that I was so tempted to get a Centro. I'm just going to get my uh, my waist yarn ready. I was so tempted to get a Centro because I really want a, the 48. But now I'm seeing that this 32 mushroom thing is coming along. And I'm like, should I get one? Let me know if any of you have tried this 32 mushroom. Let me know because I'm so curious. Let's see here. I want to make crochet and knitting to sell, but I need to continue practice to get better. I make stuff and always feel like I make little mistakes and I don't know. I don't like how it looks. You know what, Columbiana? That is a gorgeous name, by the way. Um, don't worry so much about making mistakes. Just work on your craft. Work on your technique. And by the way, everybody, if you have questions along the way, you just let me know. Just put question marks ahead of the question of the question so I know to scroll and answer it. Because in between making, I'm going to answer questions because this is what we're here for. We're going to we're just going to have fun. OK, so what I would do is just try and um, work on your craft, work on your technique when you find it's inevitable. The more you do it, the more consistent your stitches will get because your muscle memory will start to form in your hand and your body and your eyes, and it'll all just connect. And eventually you'll find that your projects get bigger. I mean, get more consistent. What you want to do is work on a, a long project that's not hard, but it's just more or less the same stitch. That way you like making a scarf because if like, say you did like 50 rows of front post double crochet, back post double crochet. And then you do 50 rows of herringbone stitch and then 50 rows of a, of a cable knit. Like once you get used to doing so many rows and then having to make an entire scarf, by the time you're done that scarf, your technique will improve like exponentially. So just this Christmas, focus on just making scarves for people and use nice chunky yarn because it's very forgiving. But one thing I do advise is always, always count your stitches. I know it's such a like a novice thing to say, but a lot of people, they want to get good with their technique. But if you don't count your stitches, the thing will go wonky and it will never look good. You will end up finishing rows. You will end up decreasing. You'll end up not realizing you skip stitches. So just please count your stitches because that's like one of the very, very most important things that you have to do when you're making things and getting started and trying to be like super consistent with it. So. Yes, it, the more you do, the more you will learn. So let's get started. Okay, so ladies and gent, ladies and ladies, oh, well, ladies and one gentleman, we're gonna start with, I'm gonna make a Addy beanie and I've gotta show you my little setup here. I am all set up. And this time I turned off, sorry, I had to stand up. I turned off my screens. Oh, my pleasure. I'm always happy. Just throw in your questions whenever you have them and in the comments and just put the question mark ahead and I'll answer them for you. So anyway, let's get, so we'll get started. So I have set up my Addy. Yes, it's right here. Look at what I'm going to crank away. And I have it mounted the, to the table. This took me an hour to set up my little office so that I could, um, I could mount this thing and not have it slide around. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to start off with our, I'm going to change the focus so it's a little further away. How's that? Smart setup. Oh, thank you. Yes. If you want to know how I set it up, I have, like, you can tell, like, the only way I could do it was, and you could see my floor, which is kind of cheesy of me not to be able to, like, be professional enough to, if I had a table with a hole in the middle, it'd probably be great, but you could see some of my floor, but it's fine floor, so it's, it, I don't mind, and so you'll, I just have my out of here set up on my desk, and I have my 
phone set up on on a microphone stand so it's mounted to my church microphone stand that we use for for mass and then um let's see here genesis sent hmm. and then we will uh then what i did is i connected it to my computer and i'm live streaming from my stream yard on my computer so Jojo, if you need help with that, you just let me know. You know, I'm happy to help you and or anybody else who ever needs like help setting up a live stream. OK, so I'm going to get started. So I usually start with let's just make sure I cut it. I brought along my crochet crowd so we could watch you. OK. Oh, my gosh. That's so cute. Hi, guys. What's the name of your crochet? Is that the name of your crochet crowd? Crochet crowd. So I'm going to give a big shout out to your crochet crowd. Do you want, um, send me your link and I'll share it if you like. So I'm going to cast on ya, everybody. I'm going to do about five rows of waist yarn. Now, if you, if this waist yarn doesn't last me five rows, I may not do five rows. I'm just going to let you know that this live stream is really live and it's imperfect. And if I make mistakes or have to start over this, my friends, I'm keeping it real. I sometimes have to have to start over things. <laughs> but that's why we're here. Oh, you know what I also did? Let me know if you enjoy this. I put, I have copyright free Christmas music. Can you hear it a little bit? Let me know in the comments if you can hear this nice Christmas music. It's just gentle. Here we go. So then you can enjoy. And don't forget to ask any questions you have along the way. Now I'm going back and forth. Now I'm going to put my waist yarn into the yarn feeder. Oh, cool. It's called Little Crochet Corner on Discord. Hi, Discord, Little Crochet Corner people. If you want to comment, hop onto YouTube and say hi. I'm Karen V. Miguel. We're live right now. So just say hi but want to give a big shout out to genesis green's little crochet corner on discord you are welcome to follow along so i've done one rotation of my waist yarn now i'm going to keep going and the reason i'm doing this is because i'm creating a stable foundation for my little mini beanie that i'm making for it could fit ages three to six month old but you could also use it as a Christmas de de tree decoration, I suppose. And Jojo's back. I guess she took a little break. Thank you for letting us know. <laughs> oh, okay. Woo. You know, one thing I did notice, I tried flat panel knitting this week. And for the first time on my Abby machine, I grinded the gear like once. It went like really aggressively, do I have enough for one more row? I don't think I have enough for one for one more row, so I'm just gonna go right to the colors, okay? Today's colors that we're using are, I'm gonna do a double strand of three weight red knit cut merino delight yarn, okay? Okay, can you guys hear the Christmas music? Let me know if you can hear it, I hope you can. I find it very relaxing. And can you guys see all the, crochet, the the knitting that's happening right now? Now, I hope I can get a solid center pull from this ball. It's always a toss up. If I don't, I'm going to let it roll on the ground. The music is okay. Oh, good. I'm glad you can hear it. Okay. So I'm going to go double strand and I'm going to do 26 or you can do like 25 i'm just kind of rounding i'm going to do 26 of 26 rows of red okay so let me just get it this i'm going to do what i can to make it very very easy okay so we're opening up the the yarn holder i'm going to put all this in here because i don't think it's going to last and i'm going to put a double strand of red then I'm holding the yarn and we're gonna reset to, and we're gonna do 20, what did I say? Let's say 26, let's do 26 rows for the baby with the nice robust head. <laughs> okay, 
I remember when my daughter was born. Oh my goodness, she was huge. She was gigantic when she came out. And it was, and then when she came out, I'm telling you, she would eat, 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 eat. She would, and like, even if, and, and then I felt so bad because the doctors were like, oh no, she's not ready to go on to cereal yet. I wanted to put her on cereal so bad, but they're like, no, don't do it. She gained so much weight. She grew out of her car seat at three months. We couldn't fit her in her car seat anymore because she was so big. So we ended up, um, I had to buy a whole new car seat. And then finally, finally, she, we were able to put her on like, um, we were finally able to put her on cereal. And if you didn't feed her fast enough, she would make little grunting noises. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so cute. Okay, 26, I said, right? So we are on six. I don't have my reading glasses on, but I believe we're on six. So how's this looking to you guys? Can you see me making it? So if you can see, I've got three rows of waist yarn on and I'm going to 26 rows of red, okay? It's gonna be great. I always have to use waist yarn because I'm not great at casting on and off with the little needle. I'm sure it'll get better, but you know, we all just, I just have so much fun using this. Let's see, 26. Oh, thank you, Jojo. Thank you for putting down the comments. So smart of you. Okay, let's see here. When I can make hats for my girls, the average size doesn't fit, LOL. <laughs> when does it ever? Your kid's either too big or too small. And then, then, then comes my son, who's like, to this day, he's like a skinny mini. My daughter's like, you know, girls, they come of age and they get, everything is regular. Like she is like 16 now. She's the same size as me. We share clothes, I love it. Oh my gosh, you're so fast, classy, crafty wife. I should hurry. Okay, grab yourself a tea or a wine, because look at me. I'm just trying to keep it all together. How did you get done so fast? I guess it's because I'm chatting away here. Okay, you know what? Are you guys using a drill? I'm, I'm too scared to use a drill on my machine. 18. So I'm gonna try and catch up with y'all. See, I only have one of the legs mounted, so, but I'm trying to stay on in camera. 20, it's 20 now. 21. 22. Yeah, I'm, t I'm scared to, to try a drill. 23. 24. 25 and I'm ready to approach my 26. Okay, perfect. It didn't catch it, so I'm on 26. And then I'm going to switch to my white for let's do 24. Now this will just be the brim. So we have a lot of red, then we have a little bit of white. And then we're going to go back to red because we're going to fold it into each other and it'll be a reversible baby toque. Okay. I'm going to keep calling it a toque. And for everybody else, that means it's a beanie and it usually has a pom pom. But sometimes you can have a toque without a pom pom too. Let's see here. Ooh, this is getting jazzy. Are you hearing the jazzy Christmas music? I like it. We are very much into jazz in this house. Old jazz, new jazz, especially around Christmas time. It always reminds me of jazz, like Vince Giraldi, Gerald, because of the Peanuts movie. Like, who doesn't watch the Peanuts movie at least once over the holidays? Tell the truth. Who, or who hasn't seen it? If you haven't seen the Peanuts movie, you have to watch it. You have, like, missed out on the best thing in life. One of the best, greatest things in life. It's a classic. Anyway, I'm going to rotate and now we're going white for 24. You could probably do 25, 25, 25, but I'm going to do 26, 24, 25. So it's 20, this is 24 rows of white. 
it would be easier if this yarn had oh please please don't be trouble with me okay now classy crafty wife you're gonna be like hey Gigi, how are you it's good for you to drop in it's good to see you oh i love it when everyone drops in for lives it's kind of like having a housewarming only you don't have to worry about like protocols and all that stuff we have to worry about these days you know like, oh stay two feet apart and wear a mask and all that stuff let's just enjoy ourselves and make stuff okay because we're live oh my god you're gonna be like she's wasting yarn no i will reuse this but i'm not dealing with knots on a live stream so i'm gonna cut this mess off and just thing it if you finished your 24th row, then bear with me, friends, because I will catch up. And I will go a little slower. So if you make more than one tooth than me, you go right on ahead. Now, we're going to knot our two colors together because these ones want to stay together. And we don't want to cinch it too tight or else it'll pinch the stitch. So we'll keep going. Are you guys having fun? I hope you are. I'm having fun. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Hello. Hello, everybody. Lashira, I just want to say hi to everyone who I missed since the last row change. Yvette, have you gotten your Addy? I know you're going to get one. That's, that's fantastic. Oh, darn. I think it skipped a stitch. Okay. I don't know what to do about that because I'm not used to skipping stitches. So I'm just going to keep going. You guys are experienced Abby people. Are probably like, I know how to deal with that. What am I going to do about that? See, if it was a video, I would have redone the whole thing. But I'm going to hope for the best and move this over this is great if you guys see what just happened i missed a stitch this is like going over but i'm gonna just do my best that this this works out okay i think it worked out I'm a crochet gal, but I really love my Addy, so I'm just going to keep going. Okay, let's go to 24. I redo the whole thing, too. <laughs> I know, what choice do we have, right? And this one we're on the live, so I'm coming in through, you know? There's no fisher cut bait here. It's just finish. See, that's the thing I love about crochet, though. Like, if I was a real knitter, I I mean, I don't knit. I can't, I don't know how to knit. And I think it'd be wonderful to learn, but I really only have time to know how to crochet and to finish all of my orders and that sort of thing. But this, this relaxes me. This is fun. Because I've always, always wanted to know how to knit. And, and the fact that now there's this machine... Well, you could do this, and this isn't even a sponsored post. I pay for this this myself just so I can have the fun. Let's see, we're on fifteen, guys. How many white rows? We're gonna do. We're gonna do twenty-four white rows, my dear. Twenty-four. I have knitting needles in my basement because I've gotten them in kits and that sort of thing. So I'm at 20. I'm at 20 now. So I only have four more to go, and then we're back to red. And then you know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to show you, for those of you who are thinking, because, you know, I love to give tips on business, and I'm almost at 24. You know I love to give tips on business, merchandising, doing things to, like, help yourself earn income. Okay, I'm going to switch those right here. So I'm going to show you how to merchandise this afterwards and prepare it if you were like trying to pitch it to a store to like carry in their shops. Okay, so that's 24 white rows. Whew. Are you having fun? 
the best day of the year. Yes, it is the best day of the year. Everybody. <laughs> okay. So now we're going back to 26 rows of white. Of white. I am like super duper in the Christmas spirit now. Twenty six rows of red now, my friends. Did I say white? I meant red. That's it. Thank you, Jojo. Let's see. So we did three rows of waist yarn, twenty six rows of red, twenty four of white, and we're doing twenty six of red again. Jojo, you are a dream. You are so sweet. Yes, I used to. You used to knit, but you used to, you like crochet better. I like this little Addy machine. This is a heck of a lot of fun, but I do feel I have more creative ability when it comes to crochet. Because if there is ever like a mistake, or if you ever just want to change stuff up, I feel like I'm a lot more adaptable when it comes to crocheting and design and just stuff like that. The only thing is, it takes it takes a while, right? It takes a while. Oh, yes, it is the best days of the year, really. Well, look at this, Yvette, Jojo. Yvette watches all your videos, Jojo. You should join. Oh, my God. I love Jojo's Facebook group. Jojo, you are welcome to drop your Facebook group in this chat because I love, love, love it. The people in there are so creative. Like, if you were ever wondering... If you ever lost your motivation or you didn't know what to make next, it's incredible the things that these people make there. Like Christmas trees using like the Addy egg. I tried it. I, I want to beat the crap out of my Addy egg. I don't know how to use it well without it always dropping stitches. But I will I will get used to it. I didn't mean that. But <laughs> that Addy egg is just the worst for me. Like I was looking forward to getting it because I love the 22. I love the 46. But then the egg, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do all these cool things. I'm going to make thumbs for mittens, and I'm going to make that Christmas tree ornament thing I saw. I can't get the thing to make, like, a foot of cord without dropping stitches. Clearly, I'm not an egg person, but I'm sure I'll get the hang of it one day when I can just sit there and, like, get it working. I'm at 21 stitches. Oh, my gosh, queen! Peace and blessings to you too, my dear. I love that. I love everybody sending peace and blessings. Let's see here. I did a new one ornament tonight. Did you see it? Yes. Was it the red one? Oh my gosh, so cute. 22. And I saw the little Chris, uh, the um, Santa Claus. That was super cute too. A 23 and I got one more row. Okay, my 24. Okay, so we're at 24. Oh, wait, we're going to 26. It's good I didn't wear too thick a sweater. Okay, 26. There we go. Perfect music change. I'll put my waist yarn. It's also a, a cream, but this is like a different kind of yarn altogether. So we'll do like, hmm. See, at this point, if I was more skilled, I would cast off using the thing because all we really want to do is just cinch it, but I'm going to waste yarn it and then I'm going to hook into the, the stitches because I'm able to see it better when it's on the waist yarn. So I'm going to add the waist yarn right now and I'm only going to do about three to five rows of the waist yarn just so it stays stable while I'm hooking my, uh, I'm, while I'm trying to like hook the the final stitches so I can cinch the top. And is it showing up okay? So do you like the setup guys? Do you find that it was easy to see all of the stitches happening? I hope so. Angels are so fun. I love them too. I need it for Christmas. Did you make an angel pattern yet, Jojo? I'll bet you if you did, it would be gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna cast off now. It's like randomly. You know what? I'll wait till I get to the black. There we go. And just 
side. Ooh, close the door. Don't forget that. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. See, if, it's, if I was a, a plan ahead person, I would have left more uh, stitch at the end of this so I could loop in all, I mean, I could get all of the, um, what's it called? I could cast off onto all of these so I could cinch it, but because I didn't, I'm just gonna have to work with this little piece. Brilliant, right? Like, what kind of person are you? <laughs> Okay, let me just try and zoom in here. I'm gonna unhook this so you can see me working and what I'm doing, because we don't need this anymore unless we have enough time to make something else, like a scrunchie or something. I did pick up a lot of the patents yarn at that Michael sale. Oops, oops, let's get that. My desk is a little bit smudged. There we go. I'm going to put this over here. Okay. Okay, let's work. Right? I've got wires everywhere now. There we go. How you guys doing? Give me a shout out if you're making anything with me. Okay. Now we are going to... I'm going to... If you could see here... I'm going to try and get in the middle here. There we go. I'm going to get in. It says Claus says I'm back. I'm at the back part of Crochet Crew. Ha ha. <laughs> Let's see what it is. What yarn from Michaels? Oh, I got the Patton's yarn. But you could substitute this yarn that I'm using here with Heartland from Lion Brand. I find that looks that works really really well in the machine. I've also been finding that the loops and threads uh the silky soft and shiny i think it's called oh my gosh it go if you use it double strand in the addy it is like butter in this machine it's like ridiculously nice i love 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 it okay so i'm just picking up all the loops and yeah usually people can do this on the machine but i'm just going to do it right now and i'm going to check the comments and see how you guys are doing i use the weight but the white baby felt yarn hmm, interesting i love heartland yarn i know it's like amazing i don't think i've ever used white baby felt yarn what brand is is that a brand and where do you go to get that my dear I've never tried that. And I always hear, sometimes I look up yarns that do their do the best in the machines, but I can never find them at the store. So um, I don't know where to get them. And there's this one pattern that I really, really want to try. It's this snowball pattern. You've probably seen it. It's like viral right now on uh, YouTube. But the yarn to make it with, holy cow, it's so expensive. It's like $26 a ball or something like that. Oh my goodness. That's a lot to make snowballs. So I was looking around if any of my wholesalers carry something similar to it. Yes, it's a fluffy white yarn. Oh, is it? Okay, where do you get your... See, you're in Chicago though. I don't know if we have the same supplies as you. But the one I was looking at, it's I think it's Bernat. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Lion Brown Pound of Love is my favorite for the Addy and Center Machine. You know what, Queen? I wanted to try Pound of Love because I saw that on sale at Michael's as well. And I don't know. I, I was scared to try it in the machine because all the acrylics I've ever tried, but then again, I never tried Pound of Love. Okay, I'm at the end and I've gotten all the loops. Before I go on talking about Pound of Love, I'm just going to unravel the waist yarn, okay? So I'm going to take my thing and I'm going to wrap up my yarn. But I've tried other acrylic yarns and I've never had luck with them. So my rule of thumb is 
stick with natural fibers and I'll never have a problem with snagging and all of that other stuff that happens when I have trouble with my machine. I mean, you've seen me already. I'm using all natural fibers right now and it's I'm managing because I, I'm using yarn that I know I, I've ran through my machine a, mil, a million times. I'm just scared of acrylic. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try Pound of Love. So you're telling me that it doesn't split? I hope that, so the yarn doesn't split, right? As long as the yarn doesn't split, that's great. Because otherwise it drives me absolutely bananas. You know what I'm saying? Never. You never tried that one? Don't they have Michael's? You're in New Brunswick, right, Jojo? Or are you in Quebec? I can't remember. Um, but they should have it. There was like a sale on Pound of Yarn this whole this weekend. Okay. Oh, gee, I missed one. Look at this. I missed, I missed one. So I'm just gonna hook this back up and it fell off the stitch. So I'm gonna bring it in and I'm just gonna weave in my end. Okay, so I'm gonna cinch this side and then I'm gonna do the same for the other side. And I'll just keep chatting with you guys. Will stay with me because I'm gonna finish this whole thing, including the packaging because the packaging sometimes it's the best part we all know that sometimes there's nice products but the great products are the ones that it comes in the nice packaging right if you ever walk into a gift shop and you're like oh my gosh I'm on the way to a christening I need to find something beautiful that I just can slap a card on this will look like that so do this have five of these ready under your tree for adults and children and then this Christmas, you'll never, ever forget to give somebody something because you will always, always have a gift. Because like I said, if you want to make this for an adult, you can always just, you can estimate how much longer to make it. Because generally for an adult hat of a fully grown adult, the length of a beanie or toque is for something somewhat slouchy that you can put a pom-pom on, you want 10 inches, 10 to 12 inches. If you want it slightly less, I mean more slouchy, then you make it 12. Like I only make hats about 12 inches long. If I know it's for kind of like somebody who's young, like somewhere between the ages of like 16 to 20, maybe 30, you know, like millennials or millennials now are like 30, right? But like young people who are like styling, they like to wear the puffy jackets and stuff like that. They want to wear their their hats a little bit more slouchy. You want to go to about 12 inches so it gets a little bit of a, a drape to it. But if you're just looking for like a regular chunky like a toque or beanie, then you probably just want to stick with like 10 inches. So you'll find when this is done, it measures probably about, let's see, this this baby beanie is going to measure roughly, let's see, do I have my ruler here? I don't know, seven, seven and a half, maybe eight inches from top to bottom. So if you look at it, whenever I calculate my height and rows of my hats, I find that the Addy five row, oh my gosh, so sorry about that. It looks like I'm getting hot. For five rows of the Addy is one inch. So you only have to just calculate. So your total rows would be the number of inches, right? Okay, so let's do the other half now. And I will get, it looks like our music has temporarily stopped. Hold on, bear with me. Let's just find out what happened to our music. There we go. Ah, we're back. Okay, I'm going to do the same for this side. I'm going to take the end yarn and I'm going to weave it into the here. Let's see. I buy I buy my yarn in the garage door next door. They order it for me and also a little from Walmart. Oh, or like the garage. You probably mean like the garage sale, right? Oops, okay, so let me kind of weave in these ends. 
How are you, how are you guys doing with your items? The packaging makes such a difference. It absolutely does. I think you'll love, and you'll see that the packaging I pick, it's so easy to source, so simple to find, any bit, and, and it, you can buy it in, in volumes where it's like, it's not ridiculous to use up, like amounts of like three, I mean, five, 10, 20. You're not trying to buy like 400 boxes and you're stuck with like 400 boxes. Let's see. Jojo, I think I need to hook you up with a wholesaler. I have like a Canadian wholesaler. They're actually the biggest wholesaler in um, all of Canada. So if you need help with that, you just let me know because it doesn't cost you anything, but maybe you could just buy more yarn on a more frequent basis. You don't have to buy from yard sales and that sort of thing. And then you can count on your yarn being more consistent. You know what I mean? Hello, Deb. Oh my gosh, how have you been? Long time no see. Let me just pop on Deb Reynolds here. Hi everyone, good to see you. We're just making a mini baby hat with pom-pom and then we're gonna package it too to make it like handy dandy, ready for sale. The most appealing display you can get if you were ever to sell it. I'm just weaving in these ends. I suppose when's the next best time to get yarn on sale? I suppose you have Black Friday, you get your Cyber Mondays and that sort of thing. But when else? I hope this little piece, of, piece will last me all the way weaving in all of it. Let's see here. It's funny because you know that you have those times where you like stock up at Walmart, stock up here, stock up there. And then in the end, it ends up in a, in a sale or something like that. So I just try and be conscious of how much extra yarn I am buying, you know? And it's interesting. Like, I really enjoy doing this because this is different than what I have to do for when I make my orders. But has anybody here ever burned out from crafting? Tell me, I'm curious. Have you ever burned out from wanting to like do your craft? And is it because you do this full time? I'll be honest, I'll tell you a story. Next time I go, I'll film my time, I find it funny. <laughs> Let's see here. Next time I go, I'll film myself, you will find it. You know what? <laughs> I don't think we'd find it funny, Jojo. I love listening to your, um, your live streams and I love like, hearing your how you do things and one of the reasons people love to follow you is because you're different just like i'm different you're different and it, honestly i think the most interesting people are the ones that people like to follow so clearly jojo you're interesting <laughs> you should just go ahead and be you don't try and be anybody else they're not following you because you you're somebody else right you gotta be you just be you okay now i'm gonna take the yarn off of here this is the side that you can't unravel so you always have to find the top string and release it from this the uh, from the take the waist yarn and release the top top string that is at the very top and then once you release it from the full circumference of the waist yarn round because this would have been that piece of yarn that we wove back and forth in the needles when we first got started remember this is that yarn piece again so we're just running it back through the through the waist yarn to release the stitches and once we release it oh my gosh it's gonna be like butter like it'll just unravel in your hands like like a long lost love. <laughs> Where did I get that metaphor? I don't know. It's 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 like poetry. Let's see here. I think the season has got me talking in metaphors. <laughs> you know, I just you know what I watched yesterday was Les Mis, the 25th anniversary. I love 
Les Mis 25th anniversary, the one with Leia Salonga. Oh my gosh. So I watched that last night with my daughter while we were, while we were, um, while I was doing my, uh, my crocheting and she was drawing all these references in the, in the song, like lyrics to, to the development of the characters. And I was just like, dang, that's amazing. I've seen this musical about like 50 times and I have not drawn those like connections. This is a way deeper musical than I had thought. You just never know when you're going to just discover new things in some of the art that you make. So, or watch. Uh-oh. Something's wrong. Oh, oh my, um, okay, we're keeping it real here. I lost, I have to catch these stitches. There are probably way more experienced Addy people going, oh, geez, she's lost her, her stitches. Okay. Bear with me, folks. I'm just going to grab this yarn. Jojo, have pity on me. <laughs> okay. Now, the question is, is this a difficult thing to do? It is not. But who was it at the beginning of this live stream that were like, oh, I don't like my crocheting because... It doesn't look right. You know what? I am at the same place with my Addy in, but you just keep doing it because it's fun. And when it's done, it's beautiful. And it's worth trying because then you end up with a craft that you can love for the rest of your life. And who cares if the first 30 of what you made sucks? You're doing it for fun, right? You're doing it because you want to make something nice. Uh oh. Why? Okay. Oh, this has come out. Guys, I am ready to. Uh... <laughs> Who? <laughs> this is like. <laughs> I'm crashing and burning <laughs> on my live stream. Okay. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm getting more yarn and I'm not gonna try and use this minuscule piece of yarn. I've gotta bind off this end and deal with this situation. Okay. How are you all doing? I bet you're all doing great. Don't worry, you're doing perfect. Perfect at, <laughs> at the most, the most arduous cast off ever in Addy history. <laughs> okay, I have a dog's breakfast here that I'm going to cast off. <laughs> I'm going to just at improvise, guys. I'm going to improvise and I'm just going to cast off. And the next time I ever do an Addy along, I promise that I will know how to bind off properly without unraveling my piece and this is one of those times too where it's like oh it's good that we used waste yarn because there is a high likelihood that i will just be cutting this off of the end at this point yeah can you imagine like it's funny because you know we all do tutorials and stuff like that and i know that people who do youtube stuff and they tape it we all know that when we're making our videos, it's not perfect. So, I mean, this is what Addy Along is for. We keep it real, right? We knew it wasn't gonna go perfect. And we're all here to forgive one another for, you know, not being perfect today, but just showing up and having a good time, right? And then, but there are some professionals out there who are probably like, oh, should have planned better. But you know what? It's okay. It's, I didn't anticipate I'd screw up. And who really wants to screw up in public? <laughs> this is the human side of Karen messing up on a live stream. Next time I'm doing crochet along so I can look like a freaking genius. <laughs> 
yes. But it's like, you know, it's kind of like an experiment. Do you ever watch it? Do you ever watch? Do you ever watch those TV shows where they get kids to like try foods they've never tried before in their lives? It's it's so much it's so funny. And I know yeah. Okay. I'm just aborting. There there will be no saving of this waste yarn. <laughs> Let's see. Hi, Karen and chat room. Hello, Elaine. <laughs> okay, JoJo's like, you suck. <laughs> I know you're not. You're just having fun enjoying yourself. Thank you. Thank you. I am. You know, it's funny because some videos and eaters are watching and we, we cut a lot of it out. Yeah, we cut eight hours down to like 30 minutes. So you're just seeing the perfect parts. But today, this is what... I'm showing you, I'm showing you that this is going to turn into a pretty looking brim. I assure you, it's almost there. <laughs> and then, and then we're going to get there. I don't use waste yarn. Someone's saying, I don't use waste yarn to start a hat, but I'm going to cinch in both. If I'm good, I know that is, I know. But you know what the thing is, too? Whenever I cinch lately, I've also been messing that up. So I thought, you know what? I'll use waste yarn. That way I can be sure I pick up the stitches. But I already know at this point that my waste yarn wasn't long. My, my end wasn't long enough. I'm going to pick up these stitches. Okay. You guys are clearly way better, more experienced at, like, getting the ends so i'm just going to make sure that this thing doesn't unra unravel in my hands while i'm trying to like cinch this baby together okay yes next time i'm going to get used to not not using waste yarn when i'm going to cinch ends in together but i'm going to make sure that i don't lose all of my ends oh. this is called panicking on a live <laughs> Okay, so we're going to turn this into the inside of the hat so you don't see it. Okay. You know, I'm also watching The Great Canadian Baking Show, season six. If you guys watch that show, I love The Great Canadian Baking Show. I love, they're so nice to each other. But I just love, like, when you know they're a good baker and then... They're trying so hard to make their like their baked item look good and it's not working. So they do like they'll make they'll make ornaments and stuff like that to try and like cover it up. So this is what I'm doing. I've stuffed the ends inside of the hat and now I'm gonna go through the top and flip it to the side that the cinching was perfect. Oops, and then I'm gonna pull it up so it stays together. And now Oh my God, we have a hat. Can you believe that? All of that? <sighs> okay. So now I'm going to tack, like, I'm just going to tack the top of the hat together. I'm going to tack the top of the hat together. And it, and then my next step usually would to be label, to label it, but I'm not going to label it right now because I want to show you guys the pom-pom part. I mean, the pom-pom part's so easy. But there's so many different options for pom-poms, okay? First of all, there's the removable pom-pom. All my pom-poms are removable because I like it when you can wash the hat, right? So I should sh shoot a video of bloopers because I do lots of mistakes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like there's so... I couldn't... My blooper reel would be too long. I, sh I used to save them, but now I'm just like, no. I gotta... I gotta... I need to free up hard drive space. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So we have a lovely baby hat. Okay, folks. This was the change in the color. I think you can always leave in that end to fix it. Let's get on camera. Oh my gosh. So cute. So you can, if the baby's head is still kind of smallish, you can, you can go like this. It's, and you can also flip it. So it's all cutesy wootsy, very adorable. Okay, let's put the creme de la creme. I brought some baby alpaca 
Good Conscience Alpaca Pom Poms. If you haven't seen one of my giveaways where I gave some of these away, you totally have to get one. I sell these on my site too, if you're interested in getting a white one. These are just, mm, they're like truffle trees, okay? So I'm just gonna, so I have my Canada Bliss Pom Pom and I, to make it washable, you don't always want a pom pom because it's a if it's a slushy day, then what do you do, right? Your pom pom looks like a big old mess afterwards. So what I do is I I put a ribbon on it, my so I brand it, and then I just pop my crochet hook out the side of the right side top, pull it through into the inside of the hat. There you see that. Then I go on the other side of the hat and I bring it in the inside too. This is how we do removable pom-poms. You can invert the hat too. And then you give it a good tug. And then we, ta-da! Oh my gosh, isn't that the cutest? Okay, it looks lopsided. Look at that. It's not the sweetest. Okay, so I'll let this sit right here for a second. And then I'll show you some handy dandy packaging tips. Now, if you ever wanted to use this to sell at a craft show or something, and it's a Christmas show, friends, have it packaged ready because you will sell it in a snap. It'll, that's the beauty of it, packaging. So here's what I found. I think they have this in the States. Just get a, a U-line box, craft, craft box. Simple, simple. The simpler, the better. Clear lid. And then you get some white tissue paper. People are like, oh, should I get printed tissue paper? No, just white. Just like that. Then you put it inside like this. Let's, let me just fix this so you get a better view. There we go. You put it inside the box. And then you fold it up. You put the sticker on the thing here. You could even dress it up with a little bit of ribbon if you want inside or outside the box. Sometimes if it's for a corporate gift, I will package it. I will put it on the wrapper so that the ribbon doesn't get messed around when people are like stacking it or when shopkeepers need to display it in whatever way so if you do it like this i always use like to use double faced satin too because you never have to worry about which side is actually showing and then you do this and, and you just tuck it in and voila look all ready to sell look at that that would be like a can of bliss item right there. You sell it at any sort of local craft show or whatever. So I don't know if that helped anyone at all. And look at this wire here. I'm just... So I hope you enjoyed this live. If you guys have any questions, let me know. But that's basically it, friends. We have this beautifully packaged baby hat for you to bring to your next craft show or to your friend who just had a baby or whatever or put it on a doll or put it on the Christmas tree and a holiday tree or whatever kind of tree or even turned it into like an ornament or something like that for the holidays and next time I do a live I'm going to try my hardest not to make a ton of mistakes because I think I spend most of my time honestly trying to get the waste yarn off and and cinching it i think that if i ever cinch it again i have to really refine my like picking up the stitches from the machine that i need to watch a tutorial on but i appreciate you guys's patience and i hope you enjoyed it so friends have a safe healthy and happy hand making life don't forget to drop a comment like and subscribe because there'll be more content and also i'll just Keep doing what I'm doing because I love seeing you all, okay? Have a great evening and take care. Bye, y'all.